Hello, my name is Jacob from Intrepid Protoworks, and today we are going to cover how to make a QQ plot. The QQ plot is used to help determine whether or not your sample is normally distributed. So we're going to go ahead and open up our data file and load it in. Uh, this is the same as before. If you want this covered in more detail, you can go ahead and uh, hit up some of our previous videos. Next, we'll go ahead and grab a random sample. We don't want to go over 3 million data points, so we'll just use the random module and define our sample as random.sample, get it from our income data, and have 100 data points. With our sample in hand, let's go ahead and make ourselves a little bit more space. And then we'll go ahead and sort our sample from our smallest value to our largest value, and then we'll go ahead and get our sample size, we'll just call it sample size. And we'll go ahead and define i. It's going to be more or less an iterator with the added element that's actually part of our formula. So we'll go ahead and define sample quantiles and then loop through our sample. And for each position in our sample, we will do i minus 0.05 divided by our sample size and then append that. This gives us our sample quantile or its position within the sample or percentile rank. They're all very similar concepts. The minus 0.05 is just an offset. Uh, let's not worry about that in detail right now. Next, we're going to go ahead and load in our Z table. This is the same as in our previous video. So if you want to see that in detail, you can go ahead and reference back to our previous video. We go ahead and speed through this. Now that we have our sample quantiles and our Z table, we can go ahead and take our sample quantiles and loop through them and then get the Z value for each of those. This will give us our uh, Z scores from the normal distribution which correspond to the quantiles we calculated earlier. We will loop through all of our sample quantiles, and then in each one, we will loop through our Z table, and we'll find the closest match to the Z probability in our table that we calculated before. And then we will take the Z score that goes with that and append it to our Z scores from the normal distribution. Rather than going through a complex algorithm to find the closest match, we're just going to take the first value that is greater than the probability of our sample quantile. Next, we'll go ahead and make ourselves a little bit more space. And then we'll go ahead and put in a function to get the mean and a function to get the standard deviation. These are also concepts we've visited in previous videos. So if you want a full breakdown of those, you can go ahead and visit back in earlier parts of the series. These functions are just getting us the mean and the sample standard deviation. We will need these to calculate the DZ scores for the uh, values in our sample. With these functions in place, we can go ahead and make ourselves a little more space and then go ahead and get our mean and standard deviation. This sets us up to get the second half, which will be the Z scores for the quantiles of our sample. To get started, we'll make an empty list and then we will loop through our samples and then calculate a z-score. This will use the same z-score calculator we talked about in the previous video. And then we'll append it to our list of z-scores. Now we have everything in place to make our plot, our uh, QQ plot or quantile quantile plot. So we'll start by importing matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And additionally, this time we're going to import matplotlib dot patches as m patches so we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more to our chart or graph this time so we're going to add a legend to this we'll go ahead and define a couple of patches we'll do gray patch equals m patches dot patch go ahead and make the color gray and we'll go ahead and give a label we'll call this our expected normal quantiles then we'll go ahead and make a uh, black patch and do the same thing Except this time, we'll go ahead and call the label actual quantiles. Next, we'll go ahead and give our uh, graph itself a label. We'll go ahead and call it a normal quantile quantile plot. And we'll do plt.xlabel and name this our theoretical quantiles. And now a plt.ylabel and we'll go ahead and name this our sample quantiles. To add a legend, we just simply do uh, plt.legend and then we'll add our handles in, which will be our gray patch and our black patch. The last part we want to do is to add our scatter plots. The first one will be our z-scores from our normal distribution and our z-scores from our sample. 
the first value that we put in here is our x-axis and the second value is our y-axis. Go ahead and make the color of this uh, black. Then for our second scatter, we're just going to go ahead and plot the z-scores from our normal distribution against itself for both the x and y axes. This will give us a diagonal line that represents how close to normal our actual sample data is. Once we have this all in place, we can go ahead and um, show our plot. Go ahead and, go ahead and make the z-scores normal against themselves gray. And we forgot a uh, forgot a comma here, so we'll have to go back and fix that real quick. The comma place, save and run, and now we should see our graph for the first time. Go ahead and uh, resize this to make it a little bit easier to see on the screen. So we can see the gray series is our uh, normals, and then we can see the black series is our actual data. We can also play around this and change labels. We can also change the scale of this. So if we change this to be negative three to three on um, both X and Y, we can actually see that this uh, gray line shows up as a diagonal. You can also see our outliers. So let's go and take a moment to talk about how to interpret this graph. So the simplest way to understand this graph is in our example for the black data series, the more we see our data deviate from the gray series, the less normal our sample is, which can damage our ability to apply certain statistical tools. Like for example, with the Z distribution, those probabilities are calculated using the standard normal distribution. And the more different it is from that distribution, the harder it is to say that our Z scores make sense when applied to a normal distribution. You can also get similar information from a histogram. So let's go ahead and talk about what we can get specifically from this as well. The way our data looks here indicates that our data is skewed. This is to be expected from income data. If it had an S shape that would show a type of kurtosis, uh, if it had an inverse S shape, that would show another type of kurtosis. And if it was sloped a little bit differently, that would show another characteristic of the uh, skew. There's a lot of good online resources out there that can also help out for interpreting uh, QQ plots in a little bit more detail. Um, going into too much detail here would be a little bit beyond the scope of this tutorial, though. We'll probably talk about it a little bit more over time as we progress further down our stats series. Thank you for watching. Our next video will actually go over the z-test itself. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below and like and subscribe. Thank you.